What's happening guys, Honky Kong here. And uh, I wanna do a quick update on the, um, the Renisha McBride shooting. Okay, the police today released uh, some of the text of 911 calls, but what they did release in its entirety was the timeline of 911 calls. So that kind of, you know, brings this brings the story together a little bit, makes it a little more compact. And uh, I'm gonna release, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put out, uh, I'm gonna tell you guys exactly what what the police said as far as the timeline goes. Okay, and um, a couple things the dispatcher said uh, regarding the actual shooting itself. And uh, word for word, what the what the dispatcher says, the uh, the homeowner who who did call nine one one after the shooting, what he said. Okay, so here it goes. We'll start with the timeline. The first call came into police dispatch at twelve fifty seven a.m. Caller said um, a woman had hit a parked car and had um, left the scene of the accident. Okay, that was the first call, twelve fifty seven a.m. Second call comes in one twenty three a.m. Um, saying the 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 person the person who was in the accident returned to the scene of the accident this is at 1 23 a.m okay so they returned to the scene of the accident and appeared to be drunk okay take that for what you will um i don't see how that really the way this story ends up i don't you know she was drunk i you know i don't really know if that that means very much it, the way i look at it probably not you know like i said not 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 how this you know this turns out so uh, take it for you know take it for what it's worth but that's what the caller said she appeared to be drunk okay um 1.40 a.m., Detroit police arrives at the, the scene of the accident. Okay, she's gone, all right? 1.52 a.m., EMS shows up. She's still gone. No sign of her. Um, 2.50 a.m., the police and everybody, they, they completely cleared the scene of the accident, towed the vehicle, all that shit. She never showed up, so they, they, they didn't find her. They couldn't find her at that point. Okay, 4.46 a.m., a call comes into police dispatch with a man saying, and this is exactly what the dispatcher says, so she's got the guy on the line. She she calls police. He says he thinks he just shot somebody on his porch. That, that seems pretty key to me. You think you just shot somebody on your porch? You don't know you just blindly fired through your door? So that's that is fucking insane to me that somebody would just bust a cap through the door. Um and this was exactly almost one mile from where the accident happened to uh, it, to to the house in Dearborn Heights where she was shot and killed. So, like I said, the guy calls, says, uh, tells the dispatcher, and this is what the dispatch reported. This is at 4:46 a.m. He says, "I think I shot somebody um, on my porch." Then he hung up. Right? Dispatcher calls back, calls back, gets a hold of him. They said, one minute later, reconnects. Right? He picks back up, and he says he did shoot somebody, and he doesn't know who this person is. And that's that's basically they. Um, released uh you know they made that at the end of the call um so uh the medical examiner re released a couple things said she was shot in the face it was not at close range so i'm really uh, man i don't i don't know if if this guy you know if he opened his door and then shot if he shot through his door like what the fuck like if you shoot through your door you know that's fucking that's bad enough that's like at the very least in my opinion involuntary manslaughter did he open the door up then shoot her you know I don't know. They showed the house on TV. The, the fucking door didn't look like it has been shot through unless he got a new door. I don't know. Um, we, we need a lot more details on this case. But but right now, uh, it, it looks to me like the homeowner just blindly opened fire. Okay? It looks like, you know, like I said, I'm I'm thinking at the very least if he just, you know, hears us knock on a door or, or even if she was jiggling the door handle, even still, you, you don't open fire. You call 911 first. Let the cops show up and deal with it. So, uh... Uh, like I said, medical exam said she was not shot. Waiting on toxicology reports to determine if she was drunk or not. Like I said, in my opinion, in the grand scheme of things, the way this turned out, I don't really see what that has to, what difference that really makes. Um, you know, uh, but they're going to put it out there anyways. Um, so that that's that's what we got so far, okay? That's the timeline. Still waiting on details. Charges have still not been filed. Which uh, you know, I'm, I'm not super surprised. I, I I think probably by Friday, if they're going to charge, we'll see something. Not not super surprised, you know, to to not see anything today. But I would I would expect we would we hear something from uh, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy's office by Friday. Real quick, uh, fucking absolutely crazy in this area. You know, I know there's a lot of protests going on out there for Renisha McBride. I know I like to fucking go off on a lot of you motherfuckers out there. You know, with these protests, pretending like she's the only person killed. Um, you know, but there, there's a lot of other people getting murdered out there, okay? Um, people getting, 17 people killed in the past 10 days in Detroit, including a pregnant woman who was gunned down. Um, she died, uh, you know, 21-year-old uh, pregnant black woman. She was she was shot and killed. Uh, her baby died. Um, barbershop got shot. Three people got killed over, over the weekend. Um, 
three people, uh, were, were, you know, several people shot and killed in Inkster, three people shot in Romulus. This is all in Wayne County area, very close to Detroit. And, um, you know, just today, um, right on uh, fucking 94 and Telegraph, um, guy walks to a check cashing store, boom, shoots and kills a clerk, 30-year-old woman. Um, and, and also, Sunday, 21-year-old white girl, Jenna Garosco, you know, she was sitting in, in, in a car in Inkster, Michigan, in front of her boyfriend's house. Uh, somebody walks up, opens fire, kills her instantly. Okay, 21 years old, Jenna Garosco. So let's, you know, let's uh, let's let's stop the outrage for just one murder victim. Let's stop the outrage for just one senseless crime. Okay, I'm not saying sweep it under the rug. Absolutely not. I hope I hope there's justice done for everybody. But when I see all this energy and and, and all this emotion and anger directed towards one murder, we have so many more. We have so many more innocent victims out there. Let's 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 spread that out. Let let's let's put our energy towards towards the the pieces of shit that are out there taking innocent lives. The fucking scumbag criminals. Those are the motherfuckers that should be getting fucking shot. Let's let's put our energy towards the evil out there. Okay, you know, I, we, we, there, there's there's so much tragedy to, to to go around. I don't know why we just focus on and make you know we why we pick and choose who we're going to be outraged over. Let let how about we be outraged at the loss of any innocent life, whether it's white or black or whatever the fuck color they are. If you're an innocent person, you're murdered. That's a cause for fucking mourning. That's a call to action. Not ju not just one person, but for everybody. Equal justice for fucking everybody. Stop calling crimes hate crimes. A crime is a crime. Murder is fucking murder. Let's do that. Let's try. Let's try common sense. Let's get some common sense back in this fucking country. That's all I got, guys. I'm out. Everybody, be safe. Catch you next time. Peace.